Welcome to Breaking Paradigms, a podcast where we talk about global perspectives on spatial planning in practice and theory by Constance Frech and Sarah Kouchi. touch on a number of intersecting topics and explore scientific history, especially in conjunction with forgotten cities, why what we remember is important, and we will use examples to show you what we mean. This topic has been on our to-do list for quite a while. As researchers for the topics that we showcase, we often discuss about the true objectivity of science. One of the looming questions is how much does my background as a researcher affect my research? We know countless tales of scientists disregarding research or findings because they don't fit with their worldview or narrative. And nowhere does this become more blatantly obvious than in the forgotten settlement we want to talk about today, Great Zimbabwe. If you, like I, have read scientific literature about the African continent, you will notice that you don't have to go far back to discover clearly racist and sexist rhetorics in scientific literature. As we stand on the shoulders of giants, we also have to realize that our system of scientific conduct was shaped by people who also believed that Africa was a continent without history and had no merit to be investigated further, like German philosopher Hegel. And, especially in urban planning, we still have little research on urban heritage, operate with discriminatory laws created by colonial powers, and base education and research systems on these standards. And here the topic pivots back to objectivity. Obviously, researchers strive for objectivity. In this podcast, we definitely do. However, we are also very aware of the shortcomings. One of the clear advantages of the podcast format is that because it's spoken by a person, ideally the researcher themselves, it automatically feels more personal and clearly comes from a person. However, we will cut this part short here and get back to the forgotten cities. If you're interested in the topic, check out our article in the Zoll Plus magazine or our episode Planning Education Quo Vadis, which we will link in the description. And stay tuned for more on the topic of science communication. When thinking of urban settlements, of its historical significance. What do you think of? Can you think of a specific type of building? A typology? A settlement pattern? Did you think of a place in Europe? The Americas? Asia? Africa? Australia? Take a moment and think of some more places. How old are they? Which ones do you feel have significance? At Breaking Paradigms, we think that what and how we communicate things is important. But when it comes to history, especially very old history, we don't have a lot of choice. It was already filtered for us. We can believe and or question accounts and findings and draw our own conclusions. But who decides what should be taken into account and what deserves a platform? When I first came across Great Zimbabwe, I heard about it in a TED-Ed video. And something about that rubbed me the wrong way. Why didn't I hear about it before? Maybe in school? Maybe in university? 
I even had specific classes for urban history. But when discussing high cultures and important historical architecture, it never seemed to make the cut. However, we would love to know if you have already heard about it before. Write us a comment below. So let's dive in. What do we know about Great Zimbabwe? And why is it so significant? The world-renowned site of Great Zimbabwe is one of the most globally significant archaeological sites in Africa. Ironically, this importance is not matched by the little amount of information that is known about such an iconic site. The heritage of this regrettable situation was birthed by the destructive activities of late 19th and early 20th century antiquarians who vandalized tons of evidence without record. Chirikure et al. Great Zimbabwe was the capital city of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe. Today, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, alongside two other former capitals of the Zimbabwe culture, Kami and Mapungubwe. We assume most of you know the sub-Saharan African state of Zimbabwe, which is a landlocked country bordering Zambia, Mozambique, South Africa and Botswana. Great Zimbabwe is located in current-day Zimbabwe, more specifically in the southern fringes of southern Zambezia. The region is bounded to the east by the Indian Ocean, to the west by the Kalahari Desert, to the north by the Zambezi River and to the south by the South Bansberg range of mountains. The aforementioned destructive activities of physical destruction were also accompanied by scientific narratives that attributed the construction to foreign powers like Europeans or Arabs. But in reality, the construction dates back to the 11th century and is assumed to have been abandoned during the 15th century. Great Zimbabwe had an extension of 720 hectares, but according to phosphate and geophysical magnetic analysis, only 40% of this area was populated. During its peak, which is guessed to be between 1300 and 1450, Great Zimbabwe had 20,000 inhabitants. These numbers result in a population density of about 7,000 people per square kilometer, which is comparable to the population density of the city of Hong Kong nowadays. Even when supposing that the entire area of 740 hectares was fully populated, the population density would have been 2,800 per square kilometer, which is a number very alike to many towns across Africa nowadays. No matter how dense the city of Great Zimbabwe actually was, the ecological and sustainability effects of the continuous occupation by 20,000 people in a restricted area are yet to be fully considered. Studies done by Chirikure estimated the need for key resources for land, especially for agriculture and animal husbandry, and compared them to nowadays needs. Colonial influence changed the predominant agriculture techniques. However, those didn't only bring advantages. Today's non-arable areas would have been cultivatable using traditional methods. When looking at animal husbandry, similar findings for the amount of land use appeared. The typical landscape prevailing in Southern Africa is called felt which is an Afrikaans word which could be translated to meadow, where grazing animals is very typical. Chirikure refers to Rate when explaining the grazing methods of Great Zimbabwe the following. Grasses around Great Zimbabwe fall into sweet and sourfeld. Sourfeld describes grazing where animals gain weight during the growing season but lose weight during the dry season because of the poor quality of herbage while sweetfeld refers to the grazing where animals gain weight during the growing season and winter and are able to at least maintain their body weight. Both 
sweet and sauerfeld are found in the areas surrounding Great Zimbabwe. And he draws the assumption that it is possible that the inhabitants of Great Zimbabwe practiced livestock transhumans, which means moving animals to various grazing areas to take the advantage of both types of vegetation. This balanced use of land gives the ground time to recover and to use it fully regrown. Another need of the society of Zimbabwe was metal and especially iron played an important role. But also for this demand, the city was self-supplying. Around the site of Great Zimbabwe, various small-scale metal productions were found. Another theory is that the city traded to gain metal like iron, gold and copper and used the surplus for further trade toward the Indian Ocean trade network. Findings of exotic objects such as glass baits, Chinese saladin, Chinese porcelain and Islamic glass and fritware, when coupled with iron gongs from Central Africa, demonstrate that Great Zimbabwe participated in internal and external long-distance trading networks. If you are interested in more details about Great Zimbabwe's population, we warmly recommend an article by Shadrach Chirikure and others we will link to this episode. So, what can we actually learn from Great Zimbabwe? The world's challenge of the century is climate change. Countries around the world are looking for new methods for a more sustainable economy. Especially Africa feels the environmental consequences of decades and centuries of exploitation, especially by foreign powers. Many methods for agriculture, architecture and economy came from the global north to Africa, facing totally different conditions. As mentioned before, traditional agricultural techniques enable the cultivation of more types of land than the currently used ones. So especially African countries could learn a lot from their own history, their own traditions and their old local skills. But also the Global North can learn from the Global South. If you're interested in learning from the Global South, listen to our episode we did about this topic. We will link it below. So let's take a so far conclusion. First of all, have you actually heard about Great Zimbabwe before? No? Well, you're not alone. Ever since the early days of the podcast, we were discussing to make an episode on the topic as we were both fascinated by the place and thought if we didn't learn it, maybe we can use this platform to give it a bit more space. But what is actually the reason that we never learned about Great Zimbabwe? As mentioned in the beginning of this episode, Great Zimbabwe suffered a lot of colonial deconstruction and historical data about the population was lost. Therefore, the information is in general very little. Connected to that is the lack of knowledge of Great Zimbabwe in the general mind, no matter where in the world. When thinking of other high cultures like the Mesopotamian or the Greek, even books for children are available. So those cultures are very approachable. When we started doing research about Great Zimbabwe, we realized that this topic could be heavy stuff. Only little information and if mostly only in a very academic language and big papers. When reading those papers, sometimes even more questions appeared. But we got excited. We wanted to learn more about Great Zimbabwe. So we decided to try to get an interview with Shadrach Chiri Kyura, the expert about Great Zimbabwe. And here comes the interactive part. What are your questions about Great Zimbabwe? What could help to bring more knowledge about Great Zimbabwe to the people? Tell us your questions to Shadrach Chirikuru. We're looking forward to your questions and hope for the interview. Keep the fingers crossed, stay tuned, and we'll see you in our next episode. This was Breaking Paradigms by Constanze Frech and Sarah Couchier. Be part of the conversation. If you like what we do, consider supporting us and join our Patreon community. Connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, and at breakingparadigms.org. Content and editing by Constanze Fe and Sarah Couchet. 
Sound Design by Didac Barroso and Florian Frey.